Hi folks, Dutch here from Dutch Cooking. Today we're doing the part three video for the Traeger Ranger. Today we're going to do some mods and axe. If you've seen part two video of the initial fire up, you'll notice that these handles got very hot. So today we're going to do a modification to these. So to insulate these handles, all we've got is some heat shrink. And what I've done is cut it down like that. What we're going to do is place some on the handle. Like that, take our heat gun. I'm going to do it away from here. That's one done. What we do is just going to cut the end off like that. I'm going to cut a second piece. Put that on. Once again. Do just warm that, stick it together. Once again. So now we've got two insulated handles. So my second tip or hack for this is to line this drip tray. Now we all know we can buy liners for these, but they're quite expensive. So just take some aluminium foil, small bit to begin with. Place it over the chute. Like that. Let me take our bigger bit, make sure it overlaps. the edges lined and don't forget to do the bucket so the next modification is to this notice when we're first using it we're getting a lot of smoke coming down through here which if there's smoke coming down we're losing some heat so what we're going to do we're going to use some of this heat resistant fire rope and we're going to put a gasket in around here. So there we have it. Now we have a seal. So my next tip or hack is, when using the temperature probe, and we've got it inserted into uh, our meat or whatever we're checking, is to use one of these. Simply clip it on the rack. What that does, it holds the probe in place for where the little indentation is. So one of the biggest issues I have with the Traeger Ranger is it's supposed to be portable, yet yeah, it runs off mains voltage. 
Not like some other pellet grills that are portable. You want it for 12 volt cigarette uh, type of socket. This is mains powers. I think Traeger have basically just taken the technology they have with the controller and the augers and the igniter tubes and just incorporated this. I think really to be classed as a truly portable pellet grill it's got to be 12 volt. Saying that you can run them off a power pack but these power packs can be expensive five six hundred pounds seven eight hundred dollars I've come up with a cheap solution this is a 12 volt 33 ampere hour battery straight out of my golf trolley with an inverter I first tried it on this inverter 300 watts as I'm reliably informed that this unit takes 280 watts to start and then drops down to 30 watts to run this tripped out as soon as it tried to ignite so I bought a second unit at 1500 watts so we'll connect it up and we'll see how we go so switch on get our inverter running we'll now power up We'll set the temperature 105 and ignite so to calculate the uh, amount of run hours we'll get out of this battery we take the 12 volts and times the 33 ampere hours gives us 396 watts this unit runs after it's ignited at 30 watts that's 13 hours we deduct some off for the initial starting because this runs at 280 to start off for a few minutes so I reckon we can get a good nine hours out of this battery one thing I'd always recommend with any new grill is to find out where the hot spots are on the grill whether it be a pellet grill a wood smoker or even a Weber it's always good to know the heat distribution across your grill so for that, we're going to use these, they're just store-bought par-bait red rolls. You can use the uh, canned biscuits or anything like that, just to check on this. We're going to place these evenly across our rack. These should be baked at 200 degrees C for 6 to 8 minutes. off at the back as you can see the colour which I would expect that that is where the heat's coming up I'll always and we'll see it down on this side as well yeah there we are the other thing is looking at this all over but this end of the grill is hotter than this end of the grill which is surprising as soon as this baffle plate or drip tray runs at an angle that way I'd have expected the heat to rise more at this end but it doesn't so now we know this is our hot zone and this is our cooler zone an excellent little uh, tip or hack is this this is a utensil pot holder from that well-known Swedish store no idea what we're going to do is going to put that on there what that will do will help the flames or the heat rise more centrally I've got an old rack that I'm going to use and this is good for when you want to put a pan on all the heat is going direct to the bottom of this pan or make some coffee a nice cup of coffee so another hack we can do with this we've got a 
pizza stone that fits this. Perfectly. Get the lid down. Get the pizza stone warmed up. And we'll cook ourselves a pizza. When we're using the pizza stone or the uh, ring for the pot boiling, there's a lot of heat comes out of here. So all we're going to do is take some uh, aluminium foil. We're going to fold it up. And we're going to make a bung. So we're just going to go in now and check the uh, pizza stone temperature. About 280 in the middle. 260 at the outside. I think it's about time we got our pizza on. It's okay. I know it's a store-bought pizza, but for the test, I think it'll do. Go in and have a check on our pizza. Start to bubble on the top. There we have pizza, cooked on the Traeger Ranger. Nice, nice crisp bottom. So that's it for part three of this series. If you like what we're doing here at Dutch Cooking, and especially the series on the Traeger Ranger, don't forget to subscribe and like, and we'll get some more videos out.